there. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is going to be for module number six. And at this point, we're actually halfway through the first, um, this uh, unit number three. Okay, so there's not too many questions left to do. I um, hope everybody's still doing well. And I plan to send out your term marks tomorrow at some point when I get a chance to do it, maybe tomorrow afternoon. Okay, so if you're going to look at doing some more um, questions, uh, the questions that you're going to be working on for this module are the ones that are on page number 19. They're the bottom part of that page. So I'll just scroll down here and I'll show you which ones those are. So they're question number one to question number seven and the solution sets are posted so everything should be uh, good to go for that. So I had a couple of requests to maybe go through a solution set with you or one of the questions with you and I don't want to take the video um, I don't want to make the video too long but I thought I could just go through one of them um, just as a quick little just talk your way through um, the question for you. Hopefully it won't take us too long. All right, so the first question that we're looking at here is question number one. A four gram sample of sodium hydroxide is dissolved in 200 grams of water. Temperature of the flask, it's in a glass flask, so you're also going to be given the specific heat capacity of glass. You know what the specific heat capacity is of water, and just like in the Hess's Law Lab, what you're going to do is you're going to just assume that the specific heat capacity of that solution with the water and the sodium hydroxide is pretty much the same as it is for water. There's not going to be that much difference, right, if you just add a little bit of sodium hydroxide in it to make it dissolve. So there's an assumption you're going to make here. If you're looking for the overall enthalpy or the overall heat of the reaction, you're going to take the amount of heat that's gained by the sodium hydroxide and water solution, and you're going to add that to the amount of energy gained by the glass cylinder. So those are the assumptions you're going to use. You've given the specific heat capacity. So I think this will work right here. Hopefully I don't have to do anything else. E. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so we're given our information here, and we're also given our delta T. Now remember that we know that it's exothermic, so you could go ahead and factor in your negative temperature change here. Don't worry about that. Just pop the negative in on the end of the equation, just like we've kind of been doing, okay? So here we go. We've got our given our mass of the water. We're given our mass of the glass, and we know the specific heat capacity of glass that was given to us. And so all we need to do is we can simply add the two enthalpies together. So for the enthalpy of the solution, we're taking the mass of the water, which was 200 grams, plus the four grams of the sodium hydroxide. Specific heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per gram degree Celsius, and our temperature change is 2.4 degrees. We know that that was exothermic. We can factor that in, that negative in at the end, okay? And then for the second um, uh, part of this is we're actually adding the heat of the glass container. So you've got mass of the glass, which is 70.4 grams. We know that the um, amount of energy that it absorbs is 0 0.84 joules per gram per degree Celsius, and that temperature change was 2.4. So add those two together and you end up with a pretty big value, uh, 2,188.4544 um, joules. You can keep your decimal places here and then use your significant digit rule at the end. Okay, now what if it's the enthalpy for the reaction known that we had, um, you want to reflect that as kilojoules per mole? Well, then we just have to go back to how many moles did we have of the sodium hydroxide. Okay, so we can um, multiply, or sorry, convert our joules into kilojoules, okay, and that's right there, and we're dividing that by the number of moles that we had, and I know that the calculation for calculating the um, molar mass was down here. Let me just point this out as well that um, when you did the Hess's Law Lab, some of you would have just, you just maybe forgot to add in your rough work for calculating the molar mass. And this is a, a lab where I usually just practice one more time making sure we have the right format for calculating the molar mass before we actually do our lab practical at the end of the course. So who knows if we're going to be back in June or not, but that's definitely sort of one of those steps that we're sort of building building our skills as we go on. You'll find that in this unit there's a few other things that we do to get practiced and ready to go for our lab exam and one of those practical skills is using a pipette. So I don't know how we'll do that. I don't have any pipettes at home. Um, 
<laughs> I can just show you a video, I guess, of how that works. But that's something that, uh, one of those lab skills that's kind of nice to be able to figure out how to do. Okay, so again, you've got your assumptions. And then uh, for this question, back to this question here, you can just see that we just popped in our negative value uh, for the kilojoules per mole. Okay, so your solution sets are here and I hope they're okay to read. Um, follow those through and uh, you can let me know how it goes. Um, in addition to these calculations I was just, I'd written on the Google Classroom there, just a couple of thoughts about um, sort of where we are in this pandemic and all the people that are involved in working on finding a vaccine or working to manage our healthcare system and working right in the trenches. So um, I've pulled a couple of TED Talks, a couple of them are a few years ago, but they're actually quite um, quite interesting. So I want you to sort of think about that and know that we're all thinking about the people that are working to uh, to maintain our healthcare system um, and that we all pretty much share a common bond to everybody that's working uh, on finding a vaccine and managing this all took grade 12 chemistry. Okay, so you can kind of maybe feel good about the fact that we're still learning how to do a few things um, in science, and I know that that'll take you far. So I've chosen, yeah, two good TED Talks, and um, you choose one of them to watch if you have uh, if you have another uh, if you have another chance. Okay, so take care, have a great weekend. Nothing to submit, just keep your calculations there. Um, and uh, next week we'll roll into the next few modules on rates of reaction, and it's actually kind of fun. Okay, so we'll talk to you later.